We are on 5-7, roots and zeros. We're skipping the first page because it looks scary. We'll come back to it, right? So we're on number 17. It says solve. This is not algebra 2. This is algebra 1. You can quadratic or factor. You guys are trying to factor right now. What is the pair that multiplies to negative 12 and adds to 1? x plus 4, x minus 3. Is everybody okay so far? Okay. What do I divide by? 2. two. Reduce. x plus 2. Bottoms up. 2x two two x minus 3. Are we okay? What do I do now? Four. Pull them apart. Send them equal to 0 separately. You cannot do that until it's x squared or lower. Okay. So what's x here? Negative 2. What's x here? Uh, no. Three halves, right? If you have to show that, show it. Add the three, divide by the two. No big deal. Is that okay? How many answers do I have? I'm going to write that again because it looks weird. How many do I have? Two. two. What's the degree of my polynomial? Two. two. Good. Are we okay? Okay. So it said state the number and type of roots. We had two real roots. How would I know if I had imaginary ones? They have an eye somewhere. Right? So this was two real roots. Nothing scary yet. You okay? You could have done quadratic if you want, but that takes a lot longer, and I think it's a lot easier to mess up, so I usually don't do it unless I have to. Anybody still need this page? Okay. Okay, we're going to solve. If this is x squared or lower, we do the old stuff. You can factor, you can quadratic, complete the square if you want to, whatever you want. This is too big. This is x cubed or higher. So you cannot do anything but... What? It's your only option. Um, you're being very specific. I want in general. What's my only option? Factor. Factor. You were being specific. It's not wrong. Okay. My uh, only option, if it's higher than x squared, is to factor the thing. Okay. Here's what's wrong. Right. You cannot subtract one and cube root it. How many answers would that give me? One. How many am I supposed to get? Three. You can't do that. So you have to factor. Okay. If it's a trinomial, which this is not. You can pretend or something else, right? This is not a trinomial. What is this? A binomial. So it's probably a um, special product pattern or something like that. It's probably one of the fancy ones we had memorized, right? This is probably a sum of cubes. Probably cubes because of the three. Do you see what I'm saying? Let's go back a step. Before you even do that, you're supposed to check for GCF, right? Other than a 1, we don't have one here. So I'm going to go ahead and go on. Is this a sum of cubes? Are both x cubed and 1 a perfect cube? What's the cube root of x cubed? X. What's the cube root of 1? 1. Yeah, so we're good, right? If that had said x cubed plus 7, it wouldn't be a sum of cubes because 7 is not a perfect cube. So you do have to check and make sure that's right, okay? Um, well, it wouldn't be prime because it's equal to 0. I gave you, if it said factor, it would have been prime, yeah. Okay. If it had said solve, we're, we wouldn't have been ready for that problem today. Okay. All right. So we're going to factor it. Cube root, cube root. X and a 1. Same sign. Everybody okay? Square, square. Front, back. What's in front? X squared in the back. A plus 1. Opposite of this sign is negative times each other. X. Is that okay? Okay. Now what? Pull them apart. Once you have x squared or lower, and they're being multiplied, set equal to zero, you pull them apart and set them equal to zero separately. Everybody okay? Yes, yeah. So what's this one? Negative one, don't lose it. This one will never factor. If it's a sum or difference of cubes, the second piece of it, the trinomial, will never factor. You can try if you don't believe me. It will never factor. So don't waste your time. So what are we going to have to do instead? Quadratic. quadratic. Your quadratic formula is? <laughs> Negative B plus or minus square root of B squared minus 4 times A times C all over 2 times A. Hey, thank you. All right, so this is where people start to really feel like I've left them in the dust because I'm going to speed up. Why am I going to go super fast? You should know this, 
right? I'm not saying it won't help you if, if you're confused. I'm saying right now, if you've never understood quadratic formula in the first place, do I have like 10 minutes to teach it to you? Right? So you come in during when, are you asking when we're done with the notes, or you come in during um, before school or, or something, right? And I will help you later, but I'm going to go fast because you should be okay. Does that make sense to you? Okay. So at least just write it down, try to keep up. And if I lost you, you can ask a question. But if it's, hey, I never knew this in the first place, see me Monday. Okay. So x equals 1 plus or minus square root negative 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1 all over 2 times 1. So 1 plus or minus 1 minus 4 over 2. What is 1 minus 4? Yep, x equals 1 plus or minus square root negative 3 over 2. What do I do now? Pull out the i. What do I do now? Circle it. <laughs> yeah. Right? There's no um, pizza or pie to worry about here, right? Because there's nothing to... Um, reduce, right? Simplify. If this had been like, I don't know, 4 plus or minus 8i root 3 over 2, we would have done our, our triangle thing. Does that make sense to you? So how many answers is this? 2. two. 1, so 3. So how many were we supposed to get? 3. The degree was 3. So we had one real answer, and we had two imaginary or complex answers. That's the second part of the question. How many and what type did you have? Did I lose anybody? You sure? Okay. Pardon? It says something else. Imaginary is also called complex. Either either word is fine. I think your book uses complex a lot, but imaginary is the same. Okay? Anyone still need that page? All right. Not new, not new, not new. From the quiz yesterday, from the quiz yesterday, need more practice, right? So if it's x squared or lower, you have a million options. If it's higher than x squared, what is your only option? Factor. That's all right. Factor. That's it, okay? Brianna, I know it's pretty, but <laughs> your only option is factor. Do not ever add the 625 divided by 16 and fourth root it. How many answers is that going to give you? One. How many do you need? Four. Don't do that. Right? You can't do that. So, whenever you factor, what's the first step no matter what? GCF. So take like, I don't know, 10 seconds. See if there's a GCF that's easy for you, right? Are these both even? No, so not a 2. This is divisible by 5. Is that? No. Other than that, I don't really know. I can take like a minute on my calculator, but here's what I'm going to do. I think this is a difference of what? squares, because that's even, right? If it was odd, maybe cubed, but it's different to squares probably. So I'm going to go ahead and factor it that way, and I'll show you how to tell really quickly if we screwed up and there was a GCF, okay? So when the numbers get really big like they do in Algebra 2, try to find a GCF. If you can't find one, go ahead and factor the way you think, and then I'll show you how to check if you did it right or not, okay? So this is a difference of squares because they're both perfect squares. So what's uh, square root of 16? 4. What's the square root of x to the 4? x squared, you can use your calculator, was the square root of 625? 25. 25. And then difference of squares gets different signs. Is that okay? Here's how I know that I didn't screw up and there wasn't a GCF other than 1. What's the GCF here? 1, right? What's the GCF here? 1. So that means I didn't screw up. There wasn't one that I just, like, didn't see. But um, if it had been, I don't know, uh, 5x squared plus 25, I'd have known that I probably should have pulled a 5 out in the beginning. So that's what I'm saying. Don't spend too much time on the big numbers. If it is a difference of squares, go ahead and factor it. And if you should have pulled out a GCF, you'd realize it, I think, pretty quickly on that second line. Am I making sense? Okay. Um, it's a difference of squares, so your shortcut is square root, square root, and that's what the square roots are, 4 and uh, 25, and then that's x squared. Do you understand that part? Okay, and then they get different signs. That's just your pattern. Okay, and if you wanted to, you could go back and FOIL and make sure it was right, but it is. So we have x squared or lower, so what do we do? Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull them apart, okay? Here's where, again, algebra 2 is awesome, and it's also terrible. 
it's awesome because there's like five different ways you can finish this problem. It's terrible because there's like five different ways you can finish this problem. So you're kind of like, I don't know what to do, right? You have too many choices. With these, um, this is a difference of squares. You could factor it again if you wanted. It's also missing the B. So we could add 25 divided by 4 square root. You could also quadratic formula, right? This is a sum of squares which doesn't exist, so it's not factorable. Can't factor it. Not an option. Will never work. Okay. Missing b, you could add 25 divide, or excuse me, subtract 25 divided by 4 square root it, or quadratic. Does that make sense? I always try to show you what I think is the quickest method for that problem. So whenever there's a b gone, I usually like add the 25 step. That's what I do. Okay. So I'm going to add 25 divide by 4. What? do I do now? Square root. Square root. So I'm going to write 5 over 2. That's totally fine, though. I don't use a calculator, right? So square root of 25 is 5. Square root of 2. Square root of 4, excuse me, is 2. What am I missing? Plus or minus. You guys try the second one. Okay. <clears throat> Subtract the 25. Divide by 4. If it doesn't reduce, don't worry about it. Just leave it that way. Square root. So plus or minus 5i over 2. Because you had a negative under the root. You could also write that as plus or minus 5 over 2i. Sometimes your book will write it like that. It's all the same. I don't really care. Okay? Those are the same. This is four answers. The degree was four. Check. Right? I had two real. Two real, and I had two imaginary. Whoa. My computer's mad. Two, nope, I can't write it down. Two imaginary. Write that down. It won't let me write. Oh, there we go. Imaginary. Or complex. Everybody okay? We have done nothing new. Are you okay? Okay, great. So now we're going to get to the new stuff. Let's go back to the front page. It looks very intimidating. That is a lot of words. I'm going to put it in English for you the best that I can. Okay. This first paragraph is saying everything we've already talked about. All right? It's just saying it a different way. A zero is also called a root. It's also called a solution, an x-intercept. It's all those things, right? When you have a root, it means there was a no remainder. Right? There's zero remainder because it went into it evenly. So it crossed the x-axis. So the x-intercept is zero. Da, da, da. That's all the same. It's the x-intercept of a graph. It's also known as a zero. That means it's a factor. It's a root. It's a solution. We've been talking about that for like three days now. Okay? So fundamental theorem of algebra. I'm going to talk to you about it. It's not super important that you understand it. I probably shouldn't tell you that. But every polynomial equation with degree um, higher than zero has at least one root answer in the set of complex numbers. That seems like that doesn't really make sense, right? Because if I go to my first question, do I have any i's? Right? So what that means is, like if my answer was 2, that's not imaginary, right? But they're trying to say that, like, you always have one in there. What they're saying is, oh, yeah, just kidding. It's a pretend imaginary number. It's not super important that you understand that. I'm just trying to explain that you could say plus zero i. Okay? So don't worry about that. I don't think I ever asked you a question about that. Um, and I don't want to talk about that either right now, today. All right, this is new. Descartes rule of signs. Am I saying that right? That's a French name. Is that right? I think so. I'm going to say I'm right. Um, so this looks really confusing. It is so easy. I'm going to try to explain what this says, but then when I show you how to do it, you're going to be like, oh, that's so easy. I totally get it. So just kind of like stick with me for a minute, okay? The rule of signs is going to be a huge time saver. This doesn't help you get the answer necessarily, but it helps you eliminate possibilities so you get to the answer quicker. When we get on Monday, you're going to find out on your notes, or excuse me, on your quiz yesterday on the back side, the side you guys all did really well on, the second problem where it said like x minus 5, you need to put 5 in the box, they told you where to start. Do you get what I'm saying? 
after today, I don't tell you where to start. You have to figure it out on your own. So the possibilities are endless. So you have like infinitely number of numbers to check. This will help you narrow it down as well as what I'm going to show you on Monday. So on Monday, you're going to find out there could be like 12 possible answers and you don't want to check 12, right? If you can help it. So if you know what I'm going to show you today, which takes like maybe a minute to do, you could possibly cut those answers in half. So instead of checking for 12 of them, you're going to check for like six of them. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's really worth your time to know what I'm going to show you today. But if you don't know it, can you still get the answer right? It'll just take you like twice as long. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's really easy. It's worth your time is what I'm saying. Okay? All right. So um, if P of X is a polynomial with real coefficients whose terms are arranged in descending powers of the variables, blah, 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 all chapter, make it descending order. All chapter, right? The number of positive real zeros that are possible, possible positive real zeros, <clears throat> is the number of sign changes of the coefficients of the terms or less by an even number. Let me show you what I mean. It is so easy, I promise. I know it sounds really weird though, okay? You count the number of sign changes in the problem. That's it. So here's our problem, okay? I'm going to write down what these signs are because I don't care what anything says. I just care about the signs, all right? This is a negative, this is a positive, this is a positive, this is a negative. Do you understand what I just did? I'm just looking at the signs. That's the only thing I care about. Because the question isn't asking me to solve, it's asking me how many possible positive and negative real answers I'm going to find, okay? From here to here, did the signs change? Yep, from here to here? No, from here to here? Yes, how many sign changes did I have? Okay, so two, I'll explain this part in a second, or zero, hang on for that, okay? Two or zero, possible, positive, real, zeros. Do you understand where I got two? I counted, there were two. Was that okay? And then you go down by an even number until you can't anymore. So if I had gotten six, I would have said six, four, two, or zero. If I had gotten ten, I said ten, eight, six, four, two, or zero. Do you see what I'm saying? You just go down by two until you can't anymore. Okay? Now for the odd, okay, possible odd. Make sure you understand it's just possible. The number of negative, why did I say odd? I'm sorry, you're going to plug it in for, never mind. The number of negative real zeros is the sign changes when you replace x with negative x. So you're not going to do the same thing you just did. That doesn't make sense, right? Something has to change. So that was the positives. So don't write this down. Just watch me for a minute. Watch me so you know where the rule comes from, and then I'll tell you the rule, okay? I'm going to replace all those x's with negative x's. Do you understand what I just did? I changed f of x to f of negative x. I would not write it down. I would just watch me. You never have to do it again. You totally can. I'm not mad. But, like, I would just watch because you'll never do this again. You'll just do the trick I'm going to show you. Okay? <laughs> All right. A negative 1, if you will, to the fifth power. Is that going to be a negative or a positive? It's going to be a negative, and two negatives make a positive. Okay? A negative 1, x, or whatever, to the fourth is going to be negative or positive? It's going to be positive, right? And then that's going to stay positive. Does that make sense? Okay. A negative to an even is going to be positive, stay positive. And then there's no x there to even mess with. So what is a good rule to think of? Which ones are the only ones that are going to change? The odds, right? The odd exponents are the ones that are going to change sign. So odd exponents... change sign. Only when you're doing the negative guy, right? When you're trying to find the negatives. When you're trying to find the positives, you just do the problem they gave you. Okay? So you never have to do that again unless you want to. So let's, let me show you what I'm saying. If I'm doing the odd, God, I keep saying odd, I'm sorry. If I'm doing the negative, let me erase what I had so you don't get confused. I'll do that. Um, so, negative x. Is this going to, it's odd, right? So the sign is going to change. So it's going to be a positive, right? 
This is an even exponent, so it's going to stay a positive. This is an even exponent, stay. This doesn't even have an x, stay. Do you understand that? Okay, so now we count the sign changes. I don't mean from here to here sign changes. That's not what I mean. I mean going left to right. How many sign changes do I have? One, one right? So you have one or zero because you go down by two. Again, you can't say negative one answers. That doesn't make sense. So you have one or zero possible negative real zeros. If I had said five, I would have said five, three, or one. You know what I mean? Okay. What? X to the zero, which is an odd or even, so you don't really care. You don't change the constant. Okay? Okay, so we're going to do the next one just using the shortcut trick, so you never have to, like, do math on these. It should just take, I don't know, like 10 seconds. Okay? So to see the possible positives, we check the sign changes in the problem now. If you want to write it down, you can. That's a positive, that's a negative, that's a negative, that's a positive. That's what they showed me, right? How many sign changes do I have? Two. I got one here, I got one here. So two or zero possible positive real zeros. That's if you go back to that first page. That's the rule. Um, the way that the problem is right now is positive answers with the sign changes. And when we do the negative x, that's our negative answers. Is that okay? Yeah, it's just not something for you to understand. It's just a rule. Okay? Descartes understood it. I, I don't. I just do it. Okay? Um, so let's do our negatives now. I'm going to erase what I had because I, I don't like to look at too much stuff in the same spot. Um, so I'm going to do... Where am I at? Does this sign change? No, because it's an even exponent. Does this one change? Is that even or odd? Even, so don't change it. Even or odd? Even, don't change it. Nothing. Don't, don't change it. How many sign changes did I have? Two again. So two or zero. Possible negative real zeros. This will help us on Monday when we have like 15 things to check. We'll be able to knock half of them out usually and like have a better idea of where to start. It'll save us literally like five minutes a question if we know how to do it. Some questions it doesn't help you at all and some questions it saves a ton of time. Okay? We've done it before and we're going to do it today. You already found an imaginary one right here. That's imaginary, right? So I'm going to go back to the front on the bottom. Let's finish this up. So we just did Descartes' rule of science, okay? So now complex conjugates theorem. We've done this before as well. You had 2 over 4 plus i, and you had to multiply it by the complex conjugate 4 minus i. We're not doing that today, but you should already kind of be familiar with complex conjugates. So what they're saying is, if a plus bi is a zero or an answer of a polynomial function with real coefficients, then a minus bi is also an answer. What that means is they come in pairs. If you have 2i as an answer, you better tell me negative 2i as an answer. If you have 4 plus i as an answer, 4 minus i as an answer. Yes. Yep. Yep. So if you look um, here, like you just said, I have 1 plus i root 3 over 2, and I have 1 minus i root 3 over 2. They always come in pairs. Okay? Okay. So let's do one. Here we go. Whoa. Find all of the zeros. Find all of the answers. How many should I get? Four, right? Let me see how much time we got here. All right, we should get four. Um, <clears throat> if it's higher than x squared, what do you have to do? Factor. factor. However, we can't factor with five pieces, right? We can't factor by grouping. We don't know how to do that. So on the quiz, it told you where to start. It told you to put a five in the box. On Monday, I'll tell you how to know where to start, but you don't know that today. I can't show you all that today. We're already running out of time. So we're going to go ahead and decide positive or negatives. We're going to do that trick really quickly because it's worth your time. You'll find out on Monday that it's worth your time. Okay. So how many sign changes do I have in the problem the way it is? Um, uh, 
Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. How many do I have? One, two, sorry. My well, first one's positive. You gotta pay attention to that. Is that okay? No? Okay. Okay. So we have four, two, or zero. Possible, that's important. Positive, real zeros. Okay? I think that's the easy one. You just look at what you have and you count them, right? Let's do our negatives. So I'm going to go on top of it. This is even. Does it change or stay? X to the 4. Stay, right? Odd, change. Even, stay. Odd, because X to the 1 is odd. Change. Constant, stay. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? How many sign changes are there going left to right? How many times does this change? None. So no, uh, uh, I'll say real, negative zeros. So what that means is on Monday, when we have to check them all on our own, we'll know. Like I'll have 12 possibilities. I'll know six of them are gone because there's no negatives. Like that cuts out half your choices. So on Monday, this will make more sense. But it's actually worth your time. The, the what, 30 seconds it took us? is really worth your time. It'll take you, it'll save you like five or ten minutes on your homework if you understand it. You don't get that today, but that's the point, okay? So today, you don't know why, but I'm telling you, four is going to go in the box. But you don't understand that today. We'll get to that on Monday, okay? Four goes in the box. What goes behind it? One, One negative eight, 20, <laughs> negative 32, 64. Is everybody okay? We're doing synthetic division, right? Okay? Bring down the one. What do you get? One. Bring down the one. What do you get? You get one. Times the four. It's okay. Four. Add. It's okay. Add. Negative four. Multiply. Negative 16. Add. Four. Multiply. 16. Add. Negative 16. Multiply. I'm going to save you time. It's negative 64. Add. Zero. So that means four was an answer. It was a zero. It was a factor. All that stuff is the same. Is that okay? So don't lose it. If you get a zero remainder, I'm like, hey, whoa, there's an answer right there. People, like, forget it and lose it. Okay? So what am I left with now? X cubed minus 4X squared plus 4X minus 16 equals zero because we're still solving. Are you Okay. What can I try now? Factor by grouping. That's my only choice, right? So we're going to factor by grouping. Hopefully it works, right? Cross your fingers. All right, what's your GCF in the first set of parentheses? X squared. What's left? X minus 4. This plus sign comes down. What's your GCF? 4. What's left? X minus 4. Do these match? Awesome. Whatever's written twice, you write once. Whatever's left over, I put behind it. Is that okay? The sooner you can get it to look like algebra 1, the better. That looks like algebra 1. Why does that look like algebra 1? It's x squared or lower. What do I do? Pull them apart. Set them equal to 0 separately. What's x here? 4, circle it, don't lose it. Subtract 4, square root, plus or minus 2i, right? So here's two answers. Here's a third answer. And even though it's the same, here's my fourth answer. That's called a repeated solution. We'll get to those later, but we really did get to 4. Do you guys understand that that was four answers? Okay, I know you had four twice, but you still got it twice, okay? Okay, you ready for the last two? This isn't really new to you either. Um, write a polynomial function of least degree with integral coefficients that has given zeros. Blah, 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 blah. Your final answer can't have a fraction in it, and these are the answers. They gave us the answers. They want the question. We're going backwards. We've done this before. Okay? So I'm going to speed it up a bit. This is x equals negative 1. This is x equals negative 1. This is x equals 2i. What does x also equal? 
Negative 2i, you have to know that or you're going to get it wrong, right? Okay? We're just going backwards. What do we want to equal to right before the answer on the questions before this? Right before you get to the answer, it's equal to 0. So we want these equal to 0. We're just going backwards, right? x plus 1 equals 0. x plus 1 equals 0. x minus 2i equals 0. x plus 2i equals 0. Is that okay? I don't think I've done anything crazy yet. Now what? These are all pulled apart, so we want to put them together, shove them together. x plus 1, x plus 1, x minus 2i, x plus 2i, all of them equal to 0. Now what do you do? Foil. Mm -hmm. We're going to foil. In Algebra 2, those tips and tricks I've been trying to get you to learn all year is where they really come in handy today. If you know those tips and tricks, you're going to save yourself minutes. I know that doesn't seem like much, but when your homework's already going to take you 20, wouldn't you rather it take you 15, right? So I'm going to do the tricks. This is um, the same thing x plus 1 squared, right? It's perfect square trinomial backwards. This is a difference of squares backwards. Okay, so I'm going to do the tricks. If you still don't get the tricks, you can come and see me later or whatever. You can still foil these and it'll just take longer than I do, right? So if you know you don't know the tricks, go ahead and start foiling and catch up, okay? The trick is, it's the first thing squared, it's the last thing squared, times each other, times two. Okay? This one is first thing squared, last thing squared, minus sign, because it's a difference, of squares. Again, if you don't get that, see me later, I'll help you, or just foil the thing. It's okay. It just takes longer, but who wants to do that, right? All right, so what's i squared again? Negative 1. Two negatives make a? There we go. Can't forget anything I've ever told you in your life, ever. Okay? So, most of you are better with the binomial in front of the trinomial. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. I don't care. But I just, I know most people are better if they put the, sh the smaller one in front of the bigger one. Do you understand what I'm saying? And you can multiply in any order anyway. Another thing I'm going to tell you, if doing six arrows is hard for you and you get it wrong, um, come and see me. I'll show you another option too. So I'm fine with six arrows. I get it right. It doesn't bother me. But some of you might want me to show you a different way. Okay? So let's do our six arrows. We'll do three at a time, right? What's this one? x to the 4 plus 2x cubed plus x squared, right? Let's do the under ones. What's this give me? Plus 4x squared plus 8x plus 4. You guys get we just basically foiled, but with more, okay? Now what do you do? Combine like terms, very good. x to the 4 plus 2x cubed, those are done. How many x squared do I have? I meant total, yeah. 5x squared plus 8x plus 4. What's the degree in my polynomial? 4. How many answers did I technically start out with? 4. So I'm probably right. You okay? Okay. I'm going to go fast on this last one. The last one is the exact same idea. But it's a little bit harder because this is a little bit harder to foil. Okay? I'm going to start it the exact same way. If we run out of time, um, I'm going to keep recording so people can watch it. So just like bye. Um, and then we talked about extra credit and everything. So this homework is still due Monday when you walk in and answers are over there. But I'm just going to keep talking if that's okay. So then your homework will be to finish the last like five minutes. Okay? All right. So x equals 0. x equals negative 5 x equals 3 plus i, and x equals 3 minus i. I've said nothing new, right? We want to equal to 0. So this one already is. I'm not going to do that again, right? This is x plus 5 equals 0. This is x minus 3 minus i equals 0. x minus 3 plus i equals 0. Is that okay? Get everything equal to 0. Do the opposite and move it over, all right? I'm going to shove them all together, so it's x right here, okay, x plus 5, x minus 3 minus i, x minus 3 plus i. I've done nothing too scary yet, okay? So 
So here is where you have choices, right? <clears throat> Let's go ahead and um, distribute that. It's going to be, what did you say? Oh, okay. Um, x squared plus 5x, I think you said question. x minus 3 minus i, x minus 3 plus i. Okay, still nothing scary. x squared plus 5x, I think that's okay, right? If you don't understand the shortcut I'm going to show you in a second, because it's kind of hard to wrap your head around, okay? If you don't understand the shortcut I'm going to show you, you can just FOIL till you can't FOIL anymore. That's fine, but it's a lot, okay? So if you can do a shortcut, you probably want to. So I'm going to do a shortcut, all right? I'm going to leave this alone for right now. It's not going to change. I'll get to that later, all right? This is x minus 3 and x minus 3. Do you guys see that they both have an x minus 3 in them? right? So let me pause for two seconds. Let me go up here and show you what I'm going to show you, only it's harder. If I had x minus 4 and x plus 4, that's a difference of squares backwards, isn't it? Right? So you do first thing squared minus last thing squared. That's how you can FOIL that without really FOILing. Did you follow the easy one? Are you okay? I have a difference of squares here. I have x minus 1, x I said 1i, excuse me, plus i. Do you get that that's technically a difference of squares except for x is a little bit bigger, right? So it's the same rule. I'm going to say the first thing squared, I'm going to say minus the last thing squared. I didn't actually have to FOIL. I did the shortcut. This is a difference of squares. So I did the first thing, x, or really x minus 3. It doesn't matter how big it is. Okay, x minus 3 squared minus the last thing squared is i squared. If you don't get what I said at all, that's okay, but you're going to have to FOIL like a lot, and it's going to be really long, and you'll probably mess it up because it's a lot of stuff. Okay, so if you still don't get it, I'll, I'll try to slow it down a little bit on Monday for you because I know this one's kind of hard, but I'm going to go ahead and finish it as if you understand what I just said. Okay, even if you didn't understand what I just said, at least go from here with me because you can, all right? The rest of it's okay. I still have x squared plus 5x. That doesn't go away. I'm going to go ahead and not FOIL this again. I'm going to use my shortcuts, okay? This is not x squared plus 9 ever. You can write it twice in FOIL if you want to, but it's a shortcut again, right? It's the first thing squared. It's the last thing squared. It's times each other times 2, okay? I did a shortcut. I FOILed that. Can you write it twice in FOIL if you want to? Sure, that's fine. I don't care. What's i squared? Negative 1, 2 negatives make a positive. Okay. What's 9 and 1? 10. So I have x squared minus 6x plus 10. I'm going to pause there. Okay. The hardest part is understanding that this is a difference of squares and then doing it. I know that's really hard for you to understand it, but it's really worth your time because this is way quicker than foiling. I think you would have six, like 15 pieces if you didn't do it this way, okay? So now I'm just going to keep going. I have to keep foiling, right? You can again do six arrows. I'm going to show you the other option. If you're good with six arrows, great. Go ahead and do them. I'm going to show you when you do these three arrows, you're taking x squared times everything behind it, aren't you? Isn't that what you're doing? And you're taking 5x times everything behind it. Do you guys get that that's what the arrows do? I just don't usually write that down. Some of you are better at this. It's the distributive property instead of six arrows. You pick one. I don't care. You can do the arrows like we did on the last one, or you can do this. Most people are better at the distributive property. So we get x to the 4 minus 6x cubed plus 10x squared. Is that okay? Are you following me here? Plus... 5x cubed minus 30x squared plus 50x equals 0. But you totally could have done that. I don't care. I just want you to know it's an option, okay? Combine like terms. What do we have? Just the x to the 4? Um, we have negative 6x to the 3 and positive 5x to the 3. Is negative x cubed gone? We have 10x squared and negative 30x squared negative 20x squared, and then plus 50x. Hold on. What's my degree? Four. How many answers did I technically have? Four. Four. I love you. Don't hate me. <laughs> Maybe 